Hello beautiful souls, my name is Jessie and welcome back to another episode of Rewired to Inspire. This show where we'll dive into self-love, learn tangible ways to rewire the brain and discovering your soul's purpose. The goal of Rewired to Inspire is to encourage listeners to begin doing the hard work, to get curious and open to maximizing your life. Our mindset shapes how we live. Depending on life events, traumas, and personal experiences, our mindsets are all vastly different. However, one thing we all have in common is the ability to rewire our mind, to change the narrative, and to pivot our lives. I hope you leave each episode with the belief that you are so worthy to live a life true to you. I look forward to chatting with you every single Tuesday and Thursday and helping you grow exponentially in all areas of your life. Without further ado, here's today's episode. Hello, beautiful souls, and welcome back to my podcast, Rewire to Inspire. I am your host, Jesse Brown, and I am so excited to be jumping on the microphone with you all for episode number 129. If you guys are watching the video, you can see that I got way too much sunshine. My back looks like a tomato with nothing in the middle. I look like a tomato ice cream sandwich, basically. So I am trying my best to stay inside today as best as possible. It is supposed to get up to 30 degrees today with nothing but beautiful sunshine raining down, but I gotta make sure I'm protecting my skin. And so if you are watching video, you can definitely see that. But nonetheless, you guys, I am so excited to be jumping on here, to be chatting with you all for today's episode. Thursday is going to be super, super exciting, so stay tuned for that. We have our first ever guest coming on the show. And you guys, Thursday's guest is kind of a big deal, so you guys are going to love that. A lot of components that we're going to be talking about on Thursday have some similarities to what we're going to be talking about today, specifically around the conversation of fear. I wanted to chat with you guys today all about... If you know your biggest internal fear. So when I say the words fear, what is the first thing that comes to your mind? It is probably something external, meaning snakes, spiders, sharks, airplanes, drowning, rats, claustrophobia, whatever it is. Your biggest fear is likely something that is external to you. It is an environmental thing. It is a physical thing that is outside of you that provokes fear within. And so those are examples of things that most of us would say when we're talking about our fears. But we need to recognize that these fears don't necessarily provoke us or bother us or run us on a daily basis, unless we live around snakes, spiders, sharks, etc. These fears are likely not running us on a day-to-day basis. They are situational when they are provoked. If that item or physical thing is around us, we might feel fear, but we're not waking up every day with that on our mind. And so the goal of today is for you guys to begin to accurately assess what your deepest fear is internally actually is the fears that are likely driving you subconsciously that you might even realize and as we know things that drive us subconsciously can take over our life unless we bring awareness to them and we work towards pivoting them as you guys know i've i've mentioned on here a few times but if you don't i am a one-on-one trauma-informed life slash growth coach so basically i help folks from a trauma-informed perspective be able to unpack things from their past so they are able to cultivate the most fulfilling future possible and a large part of coaching is helping clients begin to identify what their blind spots are aka their internal fears Just in the last month, I have been so grateful and also shout out to, I have five clients right now that I'm working with. I have filled my roster. I started with three, I upped it to five. That is where I'm stopping for right now. I will definitely let you guys know when I am increasing that again. But for right now, that is where my tolerance is where, so I'm able to still show up as best as possible in all areas of my life. But nonetheless, in the last three months, I've had the honor of working with so many incredible people. 
And there's three clients in specific that we have been able to get to the baseline of what their fears are in our sessions. These clients are now showing up differently because they have the awareness of what was running them on the back of their mind that they didn't consciously realize. The light bulbs that went off when we landed on the fear, the permission that they felt to switch their approach to life was admirable to witness. The thing is, is if we don't know what's controlling us, if we don't know how fear is running us, we're likely making choices and decisions and living in a way that might not actually be our truth. It might be a truth in some regard, but it's likely because you're trying to protect yourself. A fear is a fear because we've experienced it before and it has hurt, hurt us. We have seen that it can be hurtful. And so we've developed this block around it. But if we have a block around something that in the past was hurtful, but in the present moment is actually exactly what we need, we can actually be walking backwards instead of forward. And so now that these clients are able to consciously realize what they were subconsciously avoiding, they're now able to pivot and shift their lives accordingly to make sure that they notice that it's happening, they notice that it's there, but they're not allowing it to run them anymore. So you might be sitting there going, okay, amazing. What about me? How do I figure this out for myself? The biggest thing I need you guys to kind of assess for yourself right now is it is going to take work. It is going to take turning within. It is going to take being honest with self because the way that we land on our fears and we land on our truths is we have to dig. We might need to dig into our past. We might need to explore areas that might be hard to explore. And so I definitely encourage you, if you think that your deepest fear might be something that is overwhelming, trying to do this with a trauma-informed coach, trying to do this with a trauma-informed counselor, with a therapist, with a friend, whoever it is, trying to do this in a safe space if you do not feel safe enough to do this alone. But it is vital that we dig, that we get curious while being gentle with ourselves. Our deepest internal fears are usually attached to our purpose, but also attached to our deepest pain. And what I mean by that is so much of our pain from our past can amplify what our purpose in life is. If you asked me when I was 10 years old if I was going to become a social worker, my answer would have been absolutely not. I didn't realize that in hindsight, a lot of the pain that I experienced, I chose the career I did to support other people in going through the same thing. A lot of our traumas and deepest pains can really aspire us towards a future that is in alignment, but we might not realize that if we haven't healed, if we haven't turned within, and if we haven't gotten curious about what it taught us. Is it giving you ignition to become better, to shift the societal um, mindset on that? Or are you maybe still in a place which is okay where your deepest pains and traumas are still kind of taking over your life? But who's to say that one day that might not pivot? So many of the greatest people that we know and we see and we study and we learn from, a lot of their work that they do is actually stemmed from pain. And if we don't recognize that, we're really mis looking up to people. We need to recognize that so much of what we do in our life is because of our experiences. It's what we've been shown. It's what we've been taught. It's what we've experienced. And so our deepest internal fears are almost always associated with your purpose that you are supposed to admire, you are supposed to work towards, or, and or, they are associated with your deepest pain that can, in hindsight, lead towards what your purpose is. So, for example, and I keep this anonymous as always, One of my client's deepest fears was the fear that she was doing something wrong. She can do something wrong. She will do something wrong. If she takes action, a part of her brain goes, you're probably going to do something wrong. You're probably going to mess this up. Somebody's not going to be happy with this. 
And so this client unfortunately had a very narcissistic mother who had brought in partners that in a lot of ways would verbally say things that still affects this client to this day. Things like you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, why are you this way, why are you that way, which causes a lot of self dissociation because if someone's just telling you you're doing something wrong all the time you're going to begin to question everything that you're doing because if someone from an outside perspective is telling you those things especially from a young age you haven't really built your identity yet or your truth yet so you kind of you look up to adults at that age and so if, if an adult is telling you that you are doing something wrong you're going to believe it and that's exactly what my client did. And it is of no fault of her own that this person decided to, in a lot of ways, subconsciously manipulate her to begin to form the identity that she's always doing something wrong. Guess how many areas of her life, and we might not even ever know this, she has held herself back because of that one person, that one voice and multiple experiences from her mother that have shaped a belief in an internal fear within her that she is doing something wrong. This is why I like my coaching to come from that trauma-informed lens. If we just say, go girl, go become better, go do this, that, and the other thing, fantastic. But if we don't recognize how much our past plays a role in how we show up in the present, we will constantly feel behind. We will constantly feel like our path isn't aligning the way it's supposed to. We'll maybe feel like we're doing something wrong. We have a fear of what people will think. We need to begin to understand what is driving us. What is it? Is it a fear that's driving us? Is it a, a sense of wanting to prove people wrong? Is there spite behind what you're doing? We all have different motivators into what it is that we do. But I do truly believe and I've come to realize so much of it is because of fears that we have established from experiences in our lives. Pausing here. What do you think could be driving you subconsciously that you have either avoided, you don't want to admit to yourself, Somebody has narcissistically painted a picture that isn't even allowing you to have a clear vision. You guys, we all have experiences that shape how we are, how we respond. The question for today is for you to assess how much that is driving you. Do you know what your biggest internal fear is and the significance that comes from knowing what that is. How empowering it is to know what that is. Now that we've labeled the fear with this client, now that we've labeled and we've identified that she has a fear of doing something wrong, we're beginning the process of becoming friends with that fear with rewiring it and using it as ignition instead of an anchor. We're working together so that she can begin to show her mind that through experiences, she's not always doing something wrong. How much her mind takes over and hijacks in those moments because it's had to in the past to get her through an experience. So my friend, right now listening, what is something that you potentially are avoiding even though you're super curious about it. For me, a lot of podcasting is ironic because so much of my life I had a fear of speaking and I didn't realize that my fear was stemmed from if I speak, I might get lashed out at. And so I never in a million years ever would have realized that I would become a podcaster. But in a lot of ways, you listening need to know that me being a podcaster was stemmed from pain. I'm choosing to show up now to prove those people wrong, that my voice does matter. My worth does matter. What I have to say does matter and not apologizing for that. But if I let that fear take over, I would have never realized the passion that I have for sharing my voice and knowing that it's helping other people to do the same. 
What is something you find yourself avoiding even though you're kind of curious about it? You want to know more. It, in, it entices you. You're, you know, curious is one of my favorite words. I've mentioned that so many times. If you're curious about something, but you're not doing it, there's probably a fear because of an experience. How can we work on that? My new thing is becoming friends with it. We don't have to like it. We don't have to want to like it. But if we want to heal it, we somewhat need to become friends with it, especially if it's a part of us, a part of our story, a part of our experiences. Our deepest fear is something we've directly experienced or something we've experienced somebody else experience. So what I mean by that is maybe something hasn't directly impacted you, but even just witnessing how pain has influenced somebody else, we can take that on as our own especially if you're empathetic, especially if you've witnessed a lot of things, you can begin to internalize that and have like a subjective fear because you've witnessed how something has affected somebody else. So if that hurt them, if I take that action, that's going to hurt me. And so we avoid. I've already mentioned this, but I really need to drill this home. A fear exists within you because it has ignition and evidence to exist or else you wouldn't have the fear in the first place. When I was coming up with today's episode, I'm like, how can I just make it be known? And every client that comes into my orbit, I'm like, you have a fear that is running you. Whether you know that or not, that is what we need to figure out. Because if you do not know and you have not identified what it is that's running you, it will continue to run you until we bring that into our conscious mind. If you look back at your life, what is something that you experienced or witnessed that you never want to feel again? You never want other people to feel that again. That fear is likely your purpose. With my client, she now has a big, big, big spot in her heart that is being guided to work towards helping youth have a different upbringing have a different aspect of healing, have a different aspect of finding their magic, finding their purpose. That's not coincidental that when she was a youth, she didn't have that. Her fear is other youth going through similar experiences that she did. So she now has that awareness of what her fear was and she can put that into her work. Now that I know what my fear is, I can put that into my work to teach other people how I healed from it, how I'm working through that. Imagine if we all faced our fears in a way, learned from them, and then educated other people about our experiences. So much of our life is spent avoiding, avoiding the things we don't want to do, we don't have to do, we're scared of. But what if those are actually the things that you're meant to do? What if those are the things that you're supposed to do? Don't let fear drive you anymore. It is there to remind you that pain has existed. It is there to help you. It is there to give you clues. But fear does not get to run your life because it will. You will avoid things for the rest of your life until you identify what is running you and what you're truly running away from. Now, is this an easy thing to do? Absolutely not. It is not an easy thing to do. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like it is and pretend like I've healed all my fears and life's so great, la la lulu. No, it's not easy. It's very challenging. It's very overwhelming, but it's also more rewarding than knowing you've spent your whole life running away from something that has caused you pain. You deserve justice. You deserve truth. You deserve to live in alignment as best as possible. I'm so sorry that you've been through experiences that have caused a fear that are holding you back from things that you want to do in your life. Some, I wanted to provide some examples of things in case you're having a hard time thinking of where to start with this. So as I mentioned, if you look back on your life, what is something you experienced or witnessed that you never want to feel again? If your parents separated at any point in your life, at a young age, as a teenager, whatever, You might subconsciously have a fear of love, a fear of commitment, a fear of losing people, a fear of choosing. If you grew up less fortunate, maybe you have a fear of money. You have a fear of going without. You have a fear of what other people will think about you. 
if you grew up getting bullied about your weight or about your appearance. You might have a fear of putting yourself out there. You might have a fear of doing anything where people could potentially judge you because of your past pain and evidence. One of the most powerful questions we can ask ourselves is why? That is the best digging question we can ask. If you notice yourself reluctant towards something, ask yourself the question, why? Get the answer, why? Get the answer until you get to your baseline truth that is driving, that is your biggest internal fear. The truth is, you guys, we all have internal fears. We all have them. It's what makes us human. It's what makes us us. It's what makes us tick. But we might not know all of the ways in which they might be running you, running your life, running your future. If you don't figure out what's running you, you could be subconsciously avoiding incredible, incredible experiences because of your past pain. One of the best parts of raising your self-awareness and healing is that you can begin to understand what makes you tick, what makes you you, what makes you the incredible human being that you are. Do not allow your experiences and your pain and the crap from other people to dim your light, to take you off your path and to dim your potential. You deserve so much more than that. Knowing that it is never too late to get curious. It is never too late to pivot your life. It is never too late to heal and to take action to change the trajectory of your life. So my friend, listening, don't allow your biggest internal fears to scare you. Allow it to motivate you, to bring up curiosity. Let how that might be subconsciously running you, be the fear. Don't fear the fear, embrace the fear. Be fearful of how that might be holding you back from living your best aligned life. You guys, I truly, truly enjoyed today's episode. I hope you guys did too. I hope you take a deep breath and just know that we all have fears running us. You are not alone. You are unique in what that is, but you are not alone. And I want you to know that if you've never felt safe before to unpack your pain, I hope that this encourages you and inspires you to be willing to just take a lens of curiosity. How can you take one step towards turning within? Knowing that until we do, it will often run your life until you choose to run it. So I truly hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. If you did, it would mean the absolute world to me if you would leave a review below, rate this show. I encourage you to follow along. There's a little plus sign on Spotify and Apple Music so you never miss a new episode. I release content every single Tuesday and Thursday. If you never want to miss out on an episode, I definitely encourage you to do so. All, all, all the love you guys. I'm so, so grateful to be here. Stay tuned for Thursday's episode and I hope hope you are all having an incredible day and I look forward to chatting with you all soon. Bye, you guys. Thank you all so, so much for tuning into today's episode of Rewire to Inspire. I absolutely love connecting with you all, so make sure you're following me on Instagram. I am at jessiebrown13. If you enjoyed today's episode, please feel free to leave a review or share with someone you think would enjoy. I look forward to chatting with you all next episode. And remember, get out of your head and into your heart.